So today we will talk about simple things like the power, how to calculate it, like different resistors connected in parallel or series. And last topic I would like to cover if I got a time is the current divider. Let us talk about the first part, which is the power. We started before, maybe last Monday, I started talking about the power, and I told you that the power is equal to V times I. And the power has units of watts. And the symbol for the power is P. And V times I could be represented by another equation. Since V is equal to I times R, I can say P is equal to I times R times I, which means the power is I squared times R. And also based on Ohm's law, I is equal to V over R. So I can say the power is equal to V times I, which is V over R, so the power could be represented by this form as well, which is V square over R. Like what I told you before, if I have a resistor and there is a current in that direction, I'm expecting positive negative for the resistor. And by the same way, if you are talking about an active element, the direction of the current will be negative to positive. If this element is active. I told you before that the power generated is equal to negative V times I and the power absorbed is equal to V times I with positive sign or V square divided by R with positive sign or I square multiplied by R. And as a reminder as well, I told you also that the magnitude for summation power generated should be equal to the magnitude for summation power absorbed in any circuit. If this identity is not applied to my problem, it means there is a mistake. Summation P generated as a magnitude is equal to summation P absorbed. I'm talking about them. I'm not talking about the sign. Summation of the power generated is equal to summation of the power absorbed. Or I can say summation of the power generated plus summation of the power absorbed using the signs is equal to zero. Now let us talk about some resistors. Resistive circuit. When should I say that the resistors are connected in series? When should I say the resistors are connected in parallel? If I have some resistors like those, and they are connected beside each others, and they have the same current, so I have R1, R2, R3, they have the same current, but they have different voltage, and there is no distribution, or in other words, I don't have between two resistors essential noise. At that time, these resistors are connected in series. They have the same current, but they have different voltages based on the value of the resistance. We are calling this type of resistors as series resistors. How to find R total? I'm going to derive the equation for finding I total right now, but I'm not asking you to derive that or I will not ask you during the final or the midterm exam to derive that equation, but I'm going to derive it with you. What I need from you at the end to know how to find the equivalent resistance that will represent all of these resistors, if I would like to throw those away and use only one resistor, what is the equivalent? So if I assume that the voltage across R1 is V1 and the voltage across R2 is V2 and the voltage across R3 is V3. And I assume that the total voltage is V. What is the relation between V 
and V1 and V2 and V3. Yes, I can say that V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Now, if I asked you about V1 as a function of R1, V1 is equal to what? I1, R1. V2 is equal to what? And V3 is equal to I3, I, sorry, multiplied by R3. What about the total voltage V? It is equal to I multiplied by the equivalent resistance or the total resistance. So based on that, I can say I times R equivalent is representing V and V1 is represented by I R1 and V2 is represented by I R2 and V3 is represented by I R3 and I can rewrite this as I as a common element multiplied by R1 plus R2 plus R3 and I can cancel this guy with this guy at the end. R equivalent is equal to summation Ri which is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So generally speaking, if you are talking about resistors connected in series, again, what do you mean by series? They have the same current and there is no distribution between resistors. I am not seeing any essential. If there is distribution here, no, they are R1 and R2 are not connected in series. Since you are saying all of these resistors are connected in series, at that time, I can say R equivalent is equal to the summation of R1, R2, and R3. Any question? Let us talk about the second thing, which is parallel resistors. So what do you mean by parallel resistors? Parallel resistors means I have more than one resistor like R1, R2, R3. They are sharing the same nodes. So I have three different resistors. They are connected between two nodes. At that time, all of these resistors are connected in parallel because they are sharing the same two nodes. I can hold these two resistors between my hands. They are sharing the start and the end for each one. At that time, they are connected in parallel. If they are connected in parallel, they are holding the same voltage. So if I assume that the voltage between these two points is V, this is the voltage for R1 and the voltage for R2 and the voltage for R3. And also, the voltage between these two points. What about the current? If I assume that this current is I, and this current is I1, and this current is I2, and this current is I3, at that time, I can say, based on Kirchhoff's current law, summation I for the top or the bottom node is equal to zero, so I can say I, is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. So if I try to write that, I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. And if I try to substitute by I as a function of V, I can say I1 is equal to V over R1, I2 is equal to V over R2, I3 is equal to V over R3. What about I, the total current? It is equal to I divided by the equivalent resistance. 
So if I try to do that, I will have I over R equivalent is equal to I over R1 plus I over R2 plus I over R3. I can divide all terms for both sides by I and at the end I will get 1 over R equivalent is equal to summation 1 over Ri, which is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and so on. And this is the way for dealing with some resistors connected in parallel. So if I have some resistors and these resistors are connected in parallel, I have some resistors and these resistors are connected in parallel and you would like to find the equivalent resistance. I can say 1 over R equivalent is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus and so on. Yes, go ahead. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. This is V. Yes, you are right. This is what I mean. Yeah, V over R. Yes, this is what I said. But I wrote it I. You are right. I mean V over R. I don't mean I over R. OK. Did I say I? At the beginning, I said V, right? But I wrote it I. I'm sorry. So. V over R equivalent is equal to V. How come it is I over R equivalent? It is not. And no one told me anything said that day. I was testing you. <laughs> but you failed that test. And he passed. I was testing you. So this guy should be V over. Yes, it's not I. V over R equivalent is equal to V over R1. Sorry for that type. Plus V over R2 plus V over R3 and so on. Based on that, I can say 1 over R equivalent is equal to submission of 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and so on. Now, as a special case, if we have only two resistors connected in parallel. Like what? Like for example that. This is R1, this is R2. And this guy is the current I. I would like you to find R equivalent. So I can say 1 over R equivalent for those is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. But I would like to add them to find R equivalent. So I can say this guy is equal to R1, R2, and the denominator here will be R2 plus R1. In other words, I can say R equivalent is equal to R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. And this is what I need only. So generally speaking, if you are talking about some resistors connected in series, R total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on. If you are talking about some resistors connected in parallel, 1 over R equivalent is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and so on. If you are talking about only two resistors, it's very easy to find R equivalent because it's equal to R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. What about if you are talking about N resistors connected in parallel? At that time, and they have the same value, I will have 1 over R plus 1 over R plus 1 over R N times. At the end, you will realize that R equivalent is equal to any one of them divided by N. Yes. Because I will have 1 over R equivalent is equal to 1 over R plus 1 over R because I told you they are equal and they are in resistors. And this one was one of my midterm problems. I told my students you have in resistors. 
it was a long story. And then these resistors are equal. Each one is equal to R. And these resistors are connected to a specific a branch. And we need to calculate the current. So the first step for dealing with that part is to calculate R equivalent, which is equal to R over N. And then the current is equal to V divided by R over N. Do you have any question? Let us see problem talking about that story. So if we have, for example, that guy, This is 12, this is 24, this is 15, 120, 7, 60, 20, and we have here 15 volts. Find the equivalent resistance seen by the voltage source. I'd like to find or calculate the equivalent resistance seen by that voltage source. So if you try to go to the problem, you wish should I start as you like. It doesn't matter. But you have to look for the series and patterns. My advice to you have to start from the corners, from the top, from the top, because for sure you are expecting to see some resistors connected in parity or series. If you try to look to 20 and 60, those are connected in parity or series. 12 and 24. What about 60 and 70? Yeah, not parallel, not series. 7 and 60, I'm breaking you. Oh, sorry. 6 and 70 parallel, and then. 7 and 60. No, I'm talking only about 7 and 60. I'm talking, I know what to ask. I know what to ask, but I'm talking only about two resistors. I'm taking you by saying 60 and 70. I know what to do about this. We would like to say the equivalent is connected in series. This is what all of you are saying. But they didn't ask me that question. I asked him six, 60 and 7. Right? So, what I would like to find is I will try to start simplifying step by step. Why I asked you about 60 and 7? Because some of you will say, oh, 60 and 7 may be parallel. Because there is a distribution of the current. No. Parallel means the two resistors should share two nodes. So 60 and 7, they are sharing this, but they are not sharing this. That's why I asked you that question. Like, for example, 120 and 7, I don't know why. Because they are sharing that node, but they are not sharing that node. This is a very simple problem, but I would like you to understand everything about that problem. That's why sometimes I'm asking you many questions. And again, by the same way, I couldn't say 15 and 12 connected in parallel or series. Why? Because the current is distributed. They don't have the same current. They are not sharing the same two nodes. So like what you said, I will start from here. And what am I going to say? I'm going to say these two are connected parallel. And these two are connected parallel. And based on that, I can find the total resistance for 12 and 24. So 12 is connected in parallel with 24 and it will give me 12 times 24 
divided by 12 plus 24. If you try to calculate this, it will give you eight arcs. And by the same way, I can say 60 in parallel with 20. If you try to find the equivalent, it will be 60 times 20 over 60 plus 20. And this guy is equal to 15 ohms. After that, you can redraw your circuit to be like that. This guy will be the equivalent of 20 and 60. 20 and 60, which is 15. And this guy will be the equivalent of 12 and 24, which is 8. And this guy will be 120, and this guy will be 7. By the way, there is a typo in the notes. I wrote 6 parallel with 20, but I mean 60 in the notes. So I have here 15 connected like that. Now, what you would like to do is you would like to continue finding the equivalent. Like what most of you said, I can say that 8, 15, and 7 are connected in, they are connected in series, so I can say that 8 plus 15 plus 7 will be equal to 30 ohms. Those then the equivalent for that will be something like that. And 120. And I have here 15. And this guy is 15 volt. Again, 30 and 120. They are connected in parallel. So I will find the equivalent of parallel of those. And the overall is connected with 15 in the overall of 120 and 30 is connected with 15 N. Yes, so I can say 15 R equivalent is equal to 15 plus 120 in parallel with 30. And this guy will be equal to 15 plus 120 times 30 over 120 plus 30. It will give me 39 volts. Any question, guys? Yes, go ahead. You don't need for the midterm or the final exam, you don't need to redraw all the steps. For example, if I'm solving the problem from the beginning, what I have to do, I would say 12 and 14 are in parallel. A. 60 and 20 are in parallel, 15. And the overall with 7 is a series. It will give me one resistor in parallel with 120, and the overall is a series with 15. So I will not write or I will not draw all of these. But for the exam, you will have enough time to do it many times. Yes. But you don't need to draw each step. If you know how to find it, that's good. If you write only what I'm writing, that's fine. That's it. Any question? Now, let us talk about a new theory or a new identity. And this identity that I'm going to talk about is one of the most important identities we are using in electric circuits. It's very, very important. It's very simple thing. But it's very important because it is repeated in many problems. Let us talk about current divider. What is the current divider? The current divider defini definition is if I have two resistors and those two resistors connected in parallel, and I know the total current. Can you find the current in each resistor as a function of the total current? This is what we are calling current divider. Imagine that we have these two resistors. 
This is R2 and this is R1. And what I know, I know the total current I. What I need, I would like to calculate the current here I1 and the current here I2. Again, what I know, the total current I. And what I need, to calculate I1 and I2 as a function of the total current. What is the condition? Two resistors or two branches. Everything in these branches are resistors. And these two branches are connected in parallel. I can find I1 as a function of the total current and the two resistors. And I can find I2 as a function of the total current and the two resistors. I will derive that equation with you right now, but I'm not asking you to derive that for the final or the midterm. But I will derive it with you. So if I assume that I have a voltage between these two points, which is V. If I ask you, anyone, what is the voltage across R2? This is the total voltage between these two points. So what is the voltage across R2? It's V. What is the voltage across R1? It's V. So the voltage across R1 and R2 is V. Because they are connected in parallel. That's why the voltage is V. Now, what is the current I as a function of V? I is equal to V over which R equivalent. So I can say I because it is the total current is equal to V over R equivalent. What about I1 or I2? I1 is equal to V over? Yes, over R1. My question right now. What is the voltage based on the equation that I'm writing here? V is equal to what? I times R equivalent. So based on this equation, I can say V is equal to I R equivalent. But what do you want? You would like to calculate I1. So I1 is equal to what? It is equal to V over R1. But for calculating I1, what do I need? For calculating, for cal sorry, for calculating V, what do I need? I need I and R equivalent. Do I have R equivalent? I have to calculate it. What is R equivalent for these two resistors? Yes, so I can say R equivalent is equal to R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. Now, can I calculate directly I1? Yes. It is equal to V over, which is equal to I multiplied by R equivalent, which is R1, R2 over R1 plus R2 over R1. We started in mathematics. The denominator of numerator is denominator. Am I right? So I can say this guy is equal to I times R1, R2 divided by R1 multiplied by R1 plus R2. This guy will be canceled with this guy at the end. This is equal to I multiplied by R2 over R1 plus R2. This is what? I1. Let me go back. Look to that identity. You have already proved that I1 is equal to I total multiplied by the resistor that the current I1 will pass through on the other resistor. Is it multiplied by R or R2? So it is multiplied by the other resistor, not the, resi the resistor that I1 is passing through, divided by the summation of two parallels. 
this vaccine. If you try to repeat the same story with I2, you will realize that I2 equals I multiplied by what? R1 over R1 plus R2. This is very important if I have to understand this. And this is only what I need. I'm not going to ask you to derive that. What I need is if I have two parallel branches and I have resistors, I can say the current in each branch is equal to the total current multiplied by, if you are looking for I1 and R1, so I1 is equal to I times R2, the other resistor, divided by the summation of these two resistors. If you are looking for I2, it is equal to total I multiplied by R1 over R1 plus R2. This identity is valid only for two branches connected in parallel. What about if I have three? What should I do? I can, yes, I can solve the problem in two different steps. If I have three branches connected in parallel, I can find the equivalent for two of the resistors and find the current in the first resistor and the equivalent of the two resistors and repeat the same story for the equivalent resistors. I have two resistors connected in parallel, then distribute the current. Are you seeing what I'm talking about? Or you would like me to draw that? OK, so I'll show you that. So if I have something like that, This guy, for example, example. I have current here, which is 10 amps. And the resistance for this guy, imagine it is 100 ohms. And imagine that the resistance for this branch is, for example, 50 ohms or I will call it 150 and 150. Any values? And I would like to calculate I1, I2, and I3. So calculate I1, I2, I3. What should I do, guys? The first step is to use the identity I have to find the equivalent of those first. The equivalent of those will be what? These two are connected in parallel. So R total of those will be R1, R2 over R1 plus R2, or any one divided by the number because they are equal, which is two. So the equivalent will be 75. And I have a current here, its name is I23. For example, this I23 is this current. And I have here I1. And this guy is 100 ohms. And this guy is 10 amps. What do you like to do? I would like to calculate I1. I1 is equal to what? It is equal to 10 multiplied by which resistor? 75 divided by 100 plus 75. This guy will be equal to 10 times 75 over 175. You can calculate it. It's very easy. Now, this is I1, but I need also I in 75, which is 2, 3. So I can say I, 2, 3 is equal to I, which is 10, multiplied by 100, am I right? Divided by 100 plus 75, which is equal to 10, multiplied by 100 over 175 amps. After finding I to 3, I'm going to repeat the story again for finding this current and this current. Right? Are you seeing what I'm talking about, guys? Am I too fast? 
Okay, so am I too boring? So I can say that I2 by using the same identity is equal to I2 three times. This is I2 150 over 150 plus 150. And I3 is equal to I to 3 times 150 over 150 plus 150. This is the answer for that part. Yes. Anyone divided by 2. Yes. This is what we have here. But I'm, I'm talking generally speaking about any number. But here I give you two similar resistors to make it more easier for me for calculations. Because I just wrote that problem right now. I didn't prepare that problem. Came in my mind. Any question? OK, so what we have already started today, I will not talk about any new theory or any new identity. What we have already started today, number one, if I have serial resistors. Number two, if I have parallel. Number three, if I have two parallel resistors and I would like to find the currents in each branch as a function of the total current. So we have two different identities we cover today are equivalent in case of two different connections. Number two, the currents divide. Let us go to one of the problems in the assignment, because I promised you yesterday, I'm going to go over all problems in the assignment to show you how to solve them. So let us go back to the tutorial. Let us solve this problem. Let me print screen this guy and put it here. And see what is needed. Also, this is the tutorial or the assignment. This is the assignment. I'm looking for the tutorial. Sorry. So let us talk about this problem. It's similar. So I would like for this problem to calculate I2, let us see this one. For this problem, find I2, V1, Vg, and the circuit shown in that figure when I1 equals 1. You know, guys, uh, I'd like to scare you while you are seeing this problem. That's why I left that open circuit. So don't be scared. I'm scaring you, so no need to be scared. Not me, the guy who is teaching the course anyway. So if I'm scaring you, I'm giving you that. That line. Why you are giving us that line? Yes. The resistors are connected in parallel, and there is n of these resistors. Yes. How do we find the current in each of them? Okay. So, if all of these resistors are connected in parallel, and all of them are equal, not equal. they are not equal. No. You will do the same by plugging gates. So we will try to find the equivalent for most of them, and leave only one. There is no formula that we can no. derive. So let us see this problem. He is telling me that if I have the circuit, I would like to calculate Vg, V1, and I1, I2. If the current, oh, he gave me I1. He didn't ask me to calculate it. If the current I1 is equal to 1. So if I'm in your situation and I'm seeing such a problem, why this guy is leaving? That line or that wire. Maybe there is something in his mind. No, 
Actually, there is nothing. I would like you to ask yourself, and I would like you to waste your time by giving you that time. So don't be tricked. You know that I'm tricking you. So I will, I will not be tricked. This is nothing. I can't erase it. But why I lift it? To test if you are understanding the circuit or not. So this line or this wire doesn't need anything but open Now let us talk about how to solve this circuit. How to solve this circuit? If you try to look closer to the circuit, I give you I1 is equal to 1. I1 is equal to 1. So I ask you to calculate Vg. My question right now, these resistors are connected in series or parallel? Yes. Can I find R total? Can I find Vg? Because Vg is equal to I times R total for this circuit. Am I right? But I have to ask myself. This current is I1. This current is I1. Am I right? This current is I1. Oh. This current is I1. What about the current here? Yes. Based on Koshov. He said that as if I gave you two different problems, they are separate, but the dependent source is depending on the other circuit. But they are not wired. So what I have to do, I will start calculating VG for that circuit. So I can say VG is equal to I1 multiplied by 60 plus 260. So VG is equal to 1 times uh, 320. Am I right? Which is equal to 320 ohms. Oh, sorry, volt. I didn't drink my coffee today. This is the first part. Now, let us talk about this part. Why I gave you that? I don't like. I, I would like you to think. Do we have current in this guy? Yes, so I can erase this. Yes, we don't have current. I can erase it. This is what I mean. So what is the relation between these two resistors? me make this guy bigger. The relation between these two, two resistors connected in parallel. What is this source? It is 25 I1. What is this guy? Excuse me? Which is current or voltage source? It's current source. Yes. So, Based on that current source, where is it? Yeah. Now, what you would like to find, I would like to calculate this current, which is I2 and V2. Once you calculated I2, it is very easy, sorry, V1, not V2, to calculate V1. Now, you told me I1 is equal to 1. So what is the value of this source? It is 25 amps. This current is this current, right? Which is this current, right? Is it this current? Yes, because the current here is zero. So this current is 25 amps. 
Can you find the current here by using the current divider? So I will call this I. Using the current divider, I is equal to what? So using current divider, I equals 25 multiplied by 20 divided by 20 plus 80. So this guy will be 25 times 20 over 100, which is equal to 5 amps. Now, can you calculate D1? And can you calculate I2? I2 is equal to what? Yes. And this is the second trick. I'm giving you the problem. I'm giving you a wrong direction for I. And you will say I2 is equal to 5. I have already solved the problem. Wrong. I didn't ask you about I, but I asked you about I. So if you told me I choose equal to 5, you are going to lose partial mark. Because I asked you about I. I know. You know the direction. But maybe because of the time and whatever happened during the midterm, you forgot to write the negative sign. But you have to lose You are friends. But we have to lose now. <laughs> so for that part, I can say I2 is equal to negative 5. I'm tricking you more by asking you about V1. This is positive, this is negative. So V1 corresponds to which current? I2, so I will say V1 is equal to I2 times 80. So again, V1 is negative or positive? Yes. So based on that, I can say V1 equals I2 multiplied by 80. So I2 multiplied by 80, which is equal to negative 400 volt. Am I right? So if you try to look to the problem, the problem is straightforward, but there are simple things. You have to pay attention, and you are losing marks for these signs if you didn't pay attention. Yes. Oh, A here. OK, so I will erase it here, thanks, and I will rewrite it again. Any question for that problem, guys? This problem is very similar to which one? Let us see this problem in the sign. So, in the assignment, yes. Um, uh, specifically with the back of the previous one, but also with this one, how do we tell which one is the one and the zero when we go in? Here, I, I, I gave you the sign positive and negative. Right, but it's in between two of them, so how do we know? Oh, which one? It doesn't matter. Because okay. they are predicting the pattern. Oh, right. They have the same voltage. So if you're trying to look to this problem, this is from the sign, it's similar to what I have already told you, but I added another part. So I will solve the left side, dg is equal to 60 multiplied, uh, 60 plus uh, 260 multiplied by I1. But I told you the voltage VO equals 5, and I asked you to start it from the right. Right? So, 20 and 20 are connected in. I can find R total, which is 10. And the original problem was that. But I added this extra resistor to make it bigger and to scale you while you are reading it. 
very easy. Okay? So don't be scared. Now, VO is equal to 10 multiplied by its curves. But away from VO, 10 connected with 40 in parallel or series. In parallel, right? So he told me what? He told me the voltage here is equal to 10. Can you find this current? Which is 40 divided, sorry, 5 divided by 40. Can you find this current? 5 divided by 20. Can you find this current? 5 divided by 20. Or I can find the total resistance and divide V over the total resistance. It doesn't matter. Are you seeing what I'm talking about? So for finding I total here, I have to find this current, this current, this current, and add them. Or find the total resistance and say the current here is equal to VO divided by the total resistance. Again, for this problem, I'm tricking you. If you try to look to VO, this is the direction for the current. Right? Do we have current here? This is the right direction. So the right direction will be like that. But I gave you wrong direction. You have to pay your attention to that, like what we did. Are you seeing what I'm talking about? After solving that part, you will go back to this guy. Again, this guy is distributing its currents. This part is similar to what I have already solved. The only extra is this part. Any question for that problem? Yes. Between what? These two? V1 is not, yes, it's not equal to VG, yes. This one? This one? If we have resistance here? Actually, you will not have current. The problem is why? Because this guy is not closed, as if you have open circuit. That's why even if there is something here, no, no current. Why? Because Kirchhoff said submission of the current for any node is equal to zero. And I know that this current is I. This current is I. This current is I. This current is I. So it's not logic to have current in this guy. Because the current will not go force and back. We can have current in this guy in one condition. If this is a closed. At that time, yes. Yes. So V0 is equal to 10, as you said. Yeah. And it's in the wrong direction. So the actual voltage Negative 10 or 10? V1 is no, in. V0, I mean. V0 is equal to 10. Yes. But it's in the wrong direction. Negative 10 then? You have to figure it out. Maybe is, there is something here and here while you are calculating. Maybe this guy and this current and this current, you will realize that there are some signs that will appear. This is your task. I showed you similar to this one. OK. You can try and on a Friday you can discuss it more. Before leaving, guys. This problem is similar. The only difference is this guy. Is canceled. Why? Short circuit. This guy is canceled. Short circuit. Then you will have this and this only similar to what I solved. Any question? I'll see you Friday. I'll go back to what is left. I'll go over, sorry, to what's left. Thank you. I had a quick question on our on the content.